Welcome to KCP Community Meeting. Today is February 28, 2023. And today I will be facilitating the meeting. As usual, we have a community meeting agenda issue open. If you have anything to discuss, they'll show anything. Feel free to add it to the community meeting. And if you have anything to add, please use the raise hands feature and me or somebody else will call your name during the discussions. And before we jump to the agenda, anything else people want to say before we kick off the agenda? Cool. Paul? Cool. Yeah, just curious if there's anyone new that wants to say hi or anyone who's joining for the first time that would be interested in sharing why you're here or any use cases you may have. Very good call. Silence. Looks like. Okay, let me. So the first agenda item is Andy Anderson from you. Let me share the screen for people to see who are not in there. Cool, yeah. Andy, microphone we, to you. Thank you, thank you, MJ. So we have uh, two things on the agenda today. The one is uh, more of triage. We need a little help. We, we've got, seen some strange behavior. That's the second one. But the first one, we've uh, there's been a new release of KCP and, and KCP Edge. We've noted it as the potential to be a good first issue is to help us bump, <clears throat> bump KCP Edge and our dependencies up to the new KCP binary. Mike, is there anything you wanted to add there? Uh, not obvious that I need to. If anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So we're, we're shamelessly soliciting help. If anybody would like to help us out on that, we think it's a good first issue. All right. Uh, if you if you're interested, please sign on and ask us to assign it to you, or ask us if you'd like to work with us. Then we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the second item, we've got some strange behavior, or at least I, I see it as strange, is that in our customizer code, uh, we have put in the directives for the compiler. The we want this to be a namespace uh, controller. So having that, we removed the gen client non-namespaced directive. And when we issue that in the log check, we get some, uh, we get an error that I don't have in front of me now, but I think you have it in front of you there. Under files changed, maybe in the, there it is. Files changed. Hack, log check out, there it is. Up top under ha under hack. There you go. Yeah, so I believe, oh, this is the old one. Let me get the new one. I'll run it real quick. So yeah, basically what it's saying is it's the customizer namespace lister is is missing, uh, is, is undeclared. And so I'm wondering if anybody out there has had this same type of issue or where I might go to fix it. Yes, Andy. And uh, I can take a look and help figure it out for you if you'd like. Thanks, Andy. All right, that's all I have. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for this one. Okay. Vince, next one is yours. Overview we'll demo multi cluster support and controller runtime. Are you ready to show yeah. us something? Yeah, can you focus for me, okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so there is a PR out, like, um, you don't have to review it necessarily, like, today or, like, whenever, like, you have some time. Like, this is some rough edges. Um, but what I'll show today is actually controller and time already working uh, in a multi-cluster scenario. So let me share. My screen, just one second. 
Encore some stuff. And uh, one thing I'll say is like I prepared this demo with kind this morning, so search this <laughs> entire rough edges. Bear with me. All right, can you folks see this? Bit too small. That's really small for me. Yeah, big small, okay. tiny. <laughs> Um, what better? I would like to say yes, but no. Okay. Um, what about now? Searches, go ahead. Uh, Vince, just a, just a small tip uh, from a Mac user. If you go to display preferences and just you know make the whole DPI setting to lower it will be quite nice for screen sharing. You don't then have to zoom all the things uh, just as a hint because I'm screen sharing a lot as well. <laughs> okay, uh, how about this? We'll just um... so I'll start with um, do you... let's do these first. Let's do first. I assume you can see this just fine. That is perfect. OK. Uh, so the, um, the PR basically like introduces like a couple of things. Um, first, there is like what is a logical cluster, like in terms of like Kubernetes um, in general. And basically, like it comes down that a logical cluster um, needs to give controller runtime an adapter. And an adapter um, naming is TBD, but an adapt like I wrote like a, this very simple kind adapter this morning, which basically uses the kind library to say um, to get a rest config, um, like when you give it a name, or to list clusters, or to watch like what clusters like we have, um, and basically return them. So like for a simple list, like you just have. Um, like kind provider list, and then it would, that would just return everything that like starts with fleet. Um, so I pre-created like three, three cluster or like two clusters locally. Um, with that's that with fleet. So there's fleet test one and fleet test two, and then um, and then there is like a watcher as well that basically at this point in time, it just like basically lists every couple of seconds and says like, do I have any changes? Have Do I have any new clusters or I have deleted any clusters? Um, so because of what we want to see is like a cluster come and go and controllers, the controller runtime manager reacting to it. And then, so this is the adapter. Um, any questions on this? Maybe it's the back. What's the final goal for this person? From this one, uh, that, looks like I'll, I skipped I'll, the beat. I'll, yeah, I'll get into it. Uh, so basically, like right now, controller runtime um, supports manager only against a single cluster. So the manager has a single config. And then if you want to watch objects on a different cluster, it's, like, it's up to you to actually create the REST configs, the caches, the clients, and so on. Um, this has been a problem forever. And so um, like an effort that I'm trying to push forward is say that uh, we want to do, we want to add like a native support for a fleet of clusters in controller runtime. What would that look like? In this example, we have a very simple manager that runs against a test environment, so not against kind. This is just like a local Cube API server in etcd. Um, this could be KCP or it could be anything else. And and then uh, we tell the, the manager, like, hey, I want to tell you how to find logical cluster. And that's where the adapter comes in. And the adapter right now just works against client. So there, could, there will be, a, for example, a KCP adapter in the future that could work against like workspaces. Um, and then the other, um, I guess, like, uh, the change is that like now the request itself has 
um, the type has a cluster in it. So like it will come with a logical name and will tell you this request came from this cluster. So act upon it. Questions so far? So um, the uh, clients, of course, need appropriate credentials. Um, what is the story for how the client credentials are um, gotten and kept? Yeah, so th that would be up to the adapter to say for a given REST or a given name, like what is the REST config you want me to use? And this is a very uh, deliberate this choice of like using a REST config instead of any other like high, higher level struct because uh, you know for KCP specifically um, we want to have a way to muck with the REST config really and like change those paths to like um, use the workspaces so, like slash cluster slash whatever um, in the future. This is not shown here because uh, again like, I just did this this morning. Uh, before this meeting. But uh, when a reconciled request comes in, a client is not given to the reconciler. The reconciler had, must go through the manager to retrieve a cluster and then retrieve the client. So the client will get cached like, at, at some point, uh, and there will be like also a means to refresh that REST config in the future. And so you will get the cluster, and yeah, the cluster has like also like a bunch of other things in it, um, like REST mappers, cache configs if you need to, all those things. Um, but folks like mostly probably potential will just need a client. You get a client for your cluster that will use whatever configuration you have been given. So in the KCP case, there will be a different REST config for each workspace? Uh, not necessarily. The the KCP adapter could use the same REST config and just modify the request path, which is exactly what the current fork of controller runtime does today. Um, so this is just a way to make it very generic so that like you don't have to really think about what the KCP adapter is doing. It will just do it for you and in a, in a generic fashion. But controller runtime does not, for example, need a fork at that point to work with KCP. So this adapter is not just responsible for producing the REST config. It also somehow has its fingers in somewhere, I wonder where, so that it can modify request paths. No, I will only do it one for a given cluster. I'm sorry. Um, I, I could understand modifying a, um, you know, a server URL in the course of producing a REST config. But you're denying that, so I don't understand how the AKCP adapter here could produce one REST config while still modifying a request paths. Um, so the, I think we have some few hands raised. I think my follow-up question might answer this question too. So basically, you need to implement, uh, let's say, I'm an AKS writing a case adapter. So I need to implement the adapter interface to be able to consume a chaos clusters. And each and every time I want to interact with certain cluster in Azure, basically adapter spits me out the rest config for that individual cluster. So that is correct, but in, uh, there, there's one thing that, that like a uh, cluster, the REST config will be stored locally in cache, like, mm -hmm. or like in memory um, yeah. in controller runtime once once you have retrieved it. OK. Andy? I think. Um, so Vince, I think to try and help answer Mike's question is the cluster.get client call something that the adapter implements or does it only implement uh, rest config so uh you mean this call right like this guy yeah cluster. so that's a good question so like we'll we'll have to dig a little bit into um into how the manager is implemented but um at a high level get cluster goes to the manager and says like i have this logical name 
I need a cluster out of it, um, the manager will ask the um, adapter if it does not have already like a cluster like in memory, it will ask the adapter, I need a REST config for this logical name. Do you have one? Um, and if it has one, it will return the REST config. And so that's where so I think that's what was here. I think that's where the confusion was is that it's not that there's okay. just one REST config, Mike. It's that there's a REST config per logical cluster name and the contract with the adapter is I give you a logical cluster name, you give me back a REST config, and however the adapter wants to implement that, it can. Well, that's what I hypothesized, and I thought I got an answer no. Oh, I meant like it does not do it at every request. Like it will be cached at some point. Um, and yeah, then, then um, I guess like there is also like the, we have I haven't covered like yet in controller runtime like um, the difference between like wildcard request and less than watch, but there is plans to, to support those as well. Um, and I can link the, the HackMD if folks are interested to. So that answer to... leads to a follow-up question. I'm gonna make sure I understand. If there is a REST config per workspace, um, does that mean there's a TCP connection per workspace? Uh, so, th so that that is where um, TCP connection per workspace. I would say yes at this point in time. That is correct. Um, like a, I guess a cache and client will be created for every REST config that um, you'll get back. Um, so that that is where like we need to add like a little bit more support for the um, for the wildcard. Uh, because that's where, like, you would save like a lot of like those connection to the, the cluster. Andy, the underlying client Go code does support sharing an HTTP client across different client Go clients, so we can make that happen, Mike. Okay, that would be interesting. Um, I have a separate question. I'll just put my hand up for it. Maybe other people can ask other questions first. Add the your next. <laughs> well, okay, if no one has other questions. Um, so I think this is a really interesting um, if uh, area you're addressing. I think it's not specific to controller runtime. Um, I think that um, you know this idea of a fleet of clusters is, you know, as you've noted, right? It appears in other contexts. And it would be nice to have, you know, an, uh, an interface, a low-level kind of uh, upstream, generally agreed upon low-level interface to to dealing with a fleet of clusters. Um, and another related question that this uh, raises, actually, even beyond a fleet, a fleet it, it implies a certain unity. So the idea is it is managed uh, coherently, consistently, and to identify a cluster, you only need like a name, and it's implicit what fleet that's part of. Um, you know, in general, Kubernetes programming, you know, I've already been writing uh, programs that deal with multiple uh, logical clusters, if I will, if you will, or API servers, right? And I need to pass a, a kube config for each one of them. And, you know, in general, if you're doing general programming where everything's not implicitly in one cluster, in one cluster, or even implicitly in the same fleet, you know, there's a question of how do you refer to something that's somewhere else? Um, and that gets into interfaces. Um, because if, if you're designing APIs that, that are talking about things that are not all in the same cluster or all in the same fleet, you have a question of how to deal with uh, references, you know, pretty generally. Um, I don't know if there's any specific answer I'm looking for, but, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things I'm looking at. Yeah, and no, I think that's a fair, um, just general, like, the, the, the general concept of like how do I refer clusters like living completely somewhere else like that um, I guess that's not like something that we're trying to answer right now like we're trying to say okay like I need to connect to multiple clusters to a fleet of clusters as you as you said like um, you know like that that could be 
usually like they're managed together or like I can get them together. Um, but in the future, there is like nothing stopping us to, for example, adding more adapters to a manager. And then like the question then is like, how do we make sure that like I can reference the right adapter, right? Like I don't want to go to an to like KCP for a con cluster and vice versa, right? So that's going to bring even more, um, I guess, complications, but we'll figure it out once this part, I guess, is done. Right. Let me just point again to some, uh, again, future builds on this. Um, I'm interested in sharding for scale. Um, and um, in, in yeah, actually, um, you know, I've done some examples of this. Uh, I worked a simple example of this with client side sharding, um, and it, um, some some object types I need to shard for scale, and some I don't. Um, if the uh, you know if, if the Kube API server code could deal with, for example, different storage for different types of objects, or maybe this adapter layer could somehow treat different kinds of objects differently. Um, that, you know, that's, that so that's, not, that's nice not something, something that we're that's not what we're, something we're trying to solve here. At right. I know you're not now. Right now. Right. But yeah, yeah but I, I do think want it's to keep interesting the future direction. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That one one step at a time. I'm just pointing to future steps that I think might be interesting uh, builds on this. Cool. Any other questions, comments so before I move on? To a lot of them. No, I think let's time box questions for this one and move to demo. Okay. Okay. So um, as you seem like we have a couple of clusters, I'm just going to run not this. Um, my example, and we'll walk through what what's happening here. So. Okay, so basically the manager got up and running, and like as a reminder, the manager is running in test environment, which is basically a kubeAF server and etcd running locally. Uh, it that's not running in kind, and then we're telling um, the manager to uh, like I adapt against like a logical clusters like running in kind. And so as you see here, uh, and you know, this is like a temporary implementation, but um, basically like it will, the manager will start like an event source for each cluster under management. So as you can see, like here, like I say, and um, I guess I maybe I forgot to mention, like this is a reconcile that only watches pods, it will watch pods across every namespace. Um, and so like, for example, here, I say, you see starting event source, the controller kind is pod, this is fleet two and fleet one. And so these are all the, the pods that are gonna be under management. And so now if I go to the test two um, cluster and I do like keep system, so I, don't, I don't have any other pods. And then pod and then I can just do kind net. I'm gonna add a label here uh, called fleet test one. See this that was edited. We'll go back here. You can see that the correct controller got and and cache like got the event, and then uh, we detected the fleet annotation. Now, what's more interesting, at least for me, is like, okay, what happens if I just create a new cluster and I name it fleet s3? It'll take a bit, but um, basically the general idea is like, hey, we want to act when clustering comes and go, and uh, we don't want to leave like connection hanging and um, you know, what's this taking so long, but um, basically like the the manager will react to changes because the adapter will inform the manager there is a new cluster or i want to delete a cluster so like i can do kind delete cluster uh, test two i don't know what kind of not cooperating right now Uh, 
can I can't see who raised the hand. Oh, so while well, we're waiting for this one, so it's in cases where watching is not possible for the adapters, I'm not even sure kind supports watching. I assume you periodically poke the APIs to check and compare states. Ah. Yeah, right now it's just doing every two seconds. It's just, it's just uh, that, that's what it's doing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Implementation we do. OK, so here now we got, so the test2 cluster got deleted. And um, the controller got the shutdown signal, just that controller. So like for any other controller uh, that's still running, um, it will, will still work. And so uh, this is still going, but you get the idea. Like, and then the, all the workers will basically be shut down. Um, all the caches will al also be shut down, and every uh, like informer that that were like running against those caches will also be shut down. Um, so that's a general idea. So, like for, for the KCP workspaces, like a, those could come and go, and if there are watcher capabilities, like you basically like could just get like automatic. Um, spinning up and down of controllers. Uh, a couple of theories. Uh, so are you creating a controller instance and shutting down a controller instance when the clusters come and go? So the, as of today, that is correct. Um, the controller is now tied to a cluster, uh, but the control implementation in controller runtime it's like very, very small. The reconciler is the same. Uh, it's just referenced like uh, multiple times. Um, but the controller and the watch is inside a controller. Um, they will be basically like tied to a cluster as like, at least for now, like it was like a, basically like the simplest way to ensure cancellation and like spinning up and down of new clusters. Um, so the in the future, um... we might reuse that. I mean, if that's the case, that in theory, you don't necessarily have to say, give me a client. Like, you could find some way for the controller to store a client, right? I mean, we can talk about it um, offline. Maybe, but the reconcile will still be shared. So, like, at this part of the code, if the, oh, it's, it's a shared like, it's reconciling. OK. Got it. Yeah, it's, okay, it's transparent. Thanks. Like the the users of controller runtime will not actually see that like this reconciler is running somewhere else, um, and and this is on purpose because like we this was the quickest way to get there with uh, by creating new controllers, um, but ultimately like we want to create new watches in a controller, uh, but that is like a large undertaking like of rerunning controller runtime, which so I have does, to still do you have separate about. So you have separate worker go routines per cluster. Correct. OK. Yes. Uh, which might be a good and bad thing, right? Because then you have at least one go routine per cluster, um, depending on like how many you want to spin up. Oh, but then that also ensures fairness, uh, technically. So um, versus like sharing it, like it, it will just be like whoever has the most notifications will win. Um, so there's like some like things to think about there too. Mike? Uh, yeah. OK, so yeah, I mean, I totally expected the reconciler to be shared. That's just functional. Uh, I was surprised at a controller per, but it sounds like you're um, planning on getting to one common controller. My, the concern is, you know, when I use controller runtime, I, I write my main uh, in a way that explicitly deals with the one controller. Uh, so I, I have to write my main differently uh, in order to use this as it is today, right? Uh, yes, and that is on purpose. We don't want to automatically opt in people to any breaking changes that will be coming up because of um, you know the fleet aspect of um, of the reconcilers, and also like we want to make sure that if there will be breaking changes. Um, there, so for example, there is something about uh, the, there's an ongoing discussion today. It's like, should the manager have the 
like a cluster associated with it like by default because right now you can just do manager get uh get client um and that that is confusing right it's like because like what client am i getting like in a multi-cluster scenario and this is the client that's associated which is test env in this case um but for new users this is like a very confusing interface and so there's like a, like a bunch of things that we need to think through um if this well, is of course i i would expect to have to opt in um particularly in this sort of architecture where i have to say you know which adapter i want to use um so clearly there's nothing going to get slipped in uh unawares but i would expect or want i presume you know fairly minimal modifications uh but yeah i mean the i guess the problem is the existing controller runtime is kind of shot through with the assumption of a single controller um so i would have expected in fact the more likely approach would be to make a client that is um you might call multi-cluster aware right the the user of the client interface uh i can get one client object and when i make a request on it it gets steered to the appropriate cluster um frederick go ahead Uh, I just have one question. Uh, uh, do, do you have uh, one cache uh, shared across uh, uh, so, so different clusters, or do, do you have a, a cache per cluster? Uh, so right now, it's uh, one cluster, one cache per cluster. Um, we're talking about the Delta Fine, so. Um, Cache, yes. right? It's, it's yeah, right, right now it's, yeah. Um, we're planning to, because of uh, the wildcard support in KCP, we're planning to have a light fork of uh, <laughs> the upstream one at some point um, so that we can namespace the cache and also share the cache um, across uh, clusters, but um, that will also be opt in. Can we time box this one now? Because I conscious we've been uh, 20 minutes plus on sitting on this one. Mike, is there anything else you want to say before we move to the next one? Let's move on, yes. Cool. OK, yeah, as Sandy said, feel free to comment in the PR. I think it's very early in the, in the development, basically, to steer it one or another direction. Cool. Next one is mine, and I will try to do it very fast because it's a very short show and tell. So I've been I've been playing around with KCP for quite a while now, and in particular, I was working on the opinionated way to manage self-manage KCP. And what I'm showing now is deployed in the public, and you can anybody can basically poke around. So name development name is uh is Faros. so basically what it allows and you have to trust me now on this one what it showed me on the screen is basically it opened a browser where i do single sign on with github it's an opinionated way to to do a kcp as a service basically directly so i logged in i and show user config for now it basically points me to the apis and what i can do is paros workspaces are on organizations so in example orgs create new demo orgs use new demo which basically what it ends up it ends up at a KCP workspace and the root for now, which represents a, an organization, organizational unit where users can create their own workspaces and provision that. And the thing is here that as a user, when I log in and I see different organizations and our workspaces, these are only visible for me and me only. So example, I use demo yes one and this is a bug which I didn't fix yet. 
this organization equals demo. So it basically provisions me a, a cluster adds configures my kubeconfig, I'm backed by GPT token. And anything I interact from here, I can do it as a normal ACP tooling too. I can try going into roots and do tree dash F, but because it's basically bound to my user, I can't do it. I only have access to the ones I provision via API. In the background, this ends up, as I mentioned, in the in the common tree of the organizations. So I can basically, as a user, I can jump in, provision myself an organization in the future, potentially add other users to that organization. And either we can use my workspace as I share with them, or I basically allow them to provision themselves. It's more as a as you said, opinionated way how you can use KCP to create something here. In this case, it's a virtual playground you can use for your IoT controller development, et cetera, et cetera, basically. Kubernetes controls planes as a service. And I mentioned that's currently, if you don't know the CLI, you can use it yourself, you make it that anything, and all that stuff is a GitHub open source. Cool. That was very short, basic demo. Any questions? Okay. If nothing. Cool. David, next one is yours. Uh, yes, I just wanted to to mention that, um, that there was an addition um, on the TMC side that was just merged some days ago, uh, mainly until now, since only deployments were you know, sort of supported, uh, at least their semantics. Um, the, the transformation that we do so that pods created downstream are you know, pointing back to KCP and also the transformation that we do on the pod spec so that pods will be automatically labeled to be upsynced back to KCP as well. This was only applied on deployments. And so uh, if one wanted to use stateful sets, even if it's not completely supported semantic wise, uh, you know, to typically to, to deploy the standard workloads using a Postgres database, for example, it was just not working. So I mainly added a, a merged up here that uh, applies the same transformations on all the pod spec cable, if we can say so. Um, resources, so replica sets and stateful sets as well. And I didn't do anything for daemon sets because obviously since it's related to to nodes and to running pods that are related to, to nodes, uh, things are, you know, uh, a bit more <laughs> tricky here. But at least that should make uh, anyone able to start using and playing at least with stateful sets or replica sets. In the future, it might also open the door to doing things like moving some logic for deployments of the KCP layer and possibly syncing replica sets, which would make uh, it possible to use, you know, the rollout, all these aspects of deployments. Well, at least it sort of increases the, the starting, just beginning uh, compliance with, with cube behaviors. Uh, in, in the area of workloads. So feedback, feedback welcomed uh, here. Do you have PR merge for this one already? Yes. Can you post it in the chat and light it to the agenda uh, sure. to pick it up? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll add it in the agenda if you want. Cool. Uh, Any questions on this? So we still have 20 minutes left. If there is no ad hoc agenda items, last minute ones, I think we have a quite a long backlog of the issues. Do you want to go for those now? Let's 
some people nodding, some. Okay, so, and you will have to help me with this. I can click buttons, but when it comes to issues, I will rely on consensus in the meeting. Cool, let's go from the oldest to the newest feature. To improve UX and API binding contains pending permission claims. How do you want to approach feature requests for this one? I know that there were some back and forth in Slack and maybe on the issue in this one uh, around some of the meanings of um, like if a claim was accepted or not and if multiple claims were accepted or not. So I think um, we can put this in the backlog and we just wanna make sure that uh, we take some time to review the proposal and provide some feedback before anybody starts working on it. So are you saying that it needs to be fleshed a bit more before somebody starts picking up? Uh, I, I mean, I'd at least like some time to dedicate to thinking through the proposal. I, I really haven't yet. So um, you can put the status, assuming you have permission to stick it in backlog. Backlog. Yeah, and that's all you got to do. Okay. Okay, do we have your question, Nicole? Uh, well, I, I can speak to this one. Um, so Steve has a PR that hasn't merged yet to publish the client set as a standalone module that would fix this. Um, so either Steve can resume that or somebody else can pick it up uh but that'll solve this one steve do you want to try and get back to that or do you want to hand it off uh, i would be awesome if someone could pick this up i'm just grabbing the link to it real quick yeah if you have a pr for that it must have been closed yeah. i think it's open you can assign it to me oh, i see it i see it i see it And um, and stay oh, let's put it in backlog for right now. Yeah. This Thanks. shouldn't be hard, so we can mark it as a good first issue, no? Yeah, I mean, if, if somebody else wanted to take it. Um. There's a little bit that's minimally tricky. Um, for making sure that the entire repo compiles correctly with the right relative links since that's so because yeah. package client is now going to become its own go module but it's the same thing that we do with package apis so it there is prior art cool. oh this one i think i seen the thread on the slide for this one yeah, we just need somebody needs to test setting the bind address to localhost and seeing if that a solves the problem and b if the tests still pass and run. So this could be a good first issue help wanted backlog. Can we just give kudos to this bug report? Yeah, <laughs> the additional context. <laughs> <laughs> Backlog, yeah. Yeah. And basically, it's uh, somebody had running Mac OS as a dependency. Yes. Cool. Feature. 
So this one is mainly related to the fact that for now we use the um, we use a, a fixed uh, hard coded list of resources for upsyncing, mainly pods and endpoints, and uh, even we we uh, forbid pods to be synced from upstream to downstream. And obviously, uh, in the future, we would at least need to have a way to customize that and you know define a sort of white list or black list. We have to discuss that of resources that can be upsynced uh, and or or also should not be synced. Uh, and so this 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 issue is mainly you know to bootstrap the discussion and also gather the use cases here in order to drive how we will how we would design this. Uh, yeah, so I assume we can keep it in, in new for now. Okay, so are you working on this or are you just facilitating the issue? Well, for, I created the issue first to track it and to, to host uh, any discussion about use cases. We already have in mind, uh, at least, yes, I already have in mind some ways to uh, fix this uh, and still need to answer one of the discussion. Um, participants but obviously there might be some other use cases as the one uh, Paolo mentioned which might drive you know the design in 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 other directions as well so I mean it's it's for now it's opened the, the, the implementation is not started I think where I'm going with this should I assign this to you or not you can yes I mean if you want but it's 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 still a uh, you know, in the design phase or brainstorming phase we can say so. Cool. Ah, it's still in a new. Are we keeping it in a new or showing the backlog? Well, yeah, yeah, you can put it in backlog, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure, quite sure about the process. I imagine if I leave it in the new, it will stay in the dashboard. Yeah, sure. That's or right. Even Bug. Currently, KCP to not check if there is an everything target location before training the current sync target. This one, I don't know if, if Kasri is here. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, I think it's mostly about um, um, KCP um, making sure to check if there is another sync target. Uh, before draining the current one, because if there are workloads running on the sync target, um, and if there is no other sync target in the location, I think the workload just disappears. Uh, we don't know where the workload is. So, yeah, that's mainly about, um, I mean, deciding whether we want to cancel the drain if there's no other, you know, place to 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 send. Yeah, the resources. Yeah, yeah. Else, else there will be sorry. Yeah, go. Else yeah, the, re go ahead. The, the resources will be uh, removed. I mean, will be unscheduled and un unassigned from the current sync target, and finally removed from the sinker and running nowhere. So that's mainly yeah. we have to answer the uh, how do we want to manage this use case? Seems to me. right. Sounds sounds like there is uh, some design thinking need to be done for this one, just because I don't think it's straightforward to do like just stop draining if if you have something. Yeah, Stefan. Yeah, plus one for design. Yeah. Don't we have don't we have labels uh, in the placement which are not directly the location labels? Doesn't matter how they were called. So it's more complicated to know whether there is a target cluster or not. It's not just looking on the location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what do we do? Yeah. This? yeah, sorry. So at least we, we should keep that in the backlog because it's it's a good thing to track, I assume. Um, now it might be also something related to coordination controllers uh, in the future steps of of the whole area. So maybe it's not it's not for short term. 
Okay, do I need to do anything about moving to backlog? Mm, not true for now. I assume we would have to think uh, about adding that into a dedicated epic uh, once we create one. Probably about, you know, safe moving. This one was fun. Uh, needs to be fixed. Somebody needs to look into it. I would probably. I think. All right, we have, there we was have enough a, details like, for today. This one. Yeah, there's enough detail. I mean, basically. Uh, we may want to have a more of a meta discussion in another session or async about how we're using the github projects because basically what we're doing is we're reviewing everything that we haven't reviewed before and shoving it so that we don't have to review it again <laughs> and eventually we'll get around to uh to noticing that we you know have these things that uh we've triaged once and maybe we should fix them so uh, we may want to refine our process. Um, this one, I think, is one that we probably should fix sooner rather than later. So I would be inclined to put it in next. But again, we're not really um, using the projects the way that we probably should be. Yeah, I had the same thinking with with this process today. <laughs> I'm just adding to next. And yeah. Any volunteers to look into this? Song? I would like to look into that just to learn a little bit more. Um, I like the session, Andy, that we did with the lower level at CD debugging. So if, if, if there's something in that area, or maybe a little bit of higher level, I think this is a nice opportunity to learn a little bit more about the internals. Yeah, this one probably yeah. involves our um, HTTP handler chain and filters to some degree. No. Feel free to assign it to me then. Cool. Assigned. Thanks. And permission claim documentation. I should do that. <laughs> there is a CC or Banyak, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't create the thing, but I'm fine with documenting it. I think we discussed that as well. Like start document. I mean, uh, start documenting it. Yeah. Backlog or next. Um, so I have uh, a minimal amount of permission claim docs, but it's not fully flushed out. I, both oh, I mean, it's, that's already merged. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine to put my name on there. Cool. I will add it to backlog once, once you get to yeah. that. You can basically move it. CTL KCP workload sync fails with timeout if referencing the export has no resources. Do we have any discussions on this one now? Um, yeah, this one probably, you know, not sure it's it's really something critical, but we have to look into it. It was uh, assigned to Jian. In fact, it's probably related to to pending work uh, already in an issue uh, about, in any case, uh, refactoring the um, option. You know, the options to import resources from the physical cluster when you add the resources argument in the KCP workload sync. There is some refactoring and cleaning up to do in this area, and it might be that you know it would be sufficient to fix this issue as well. Uh, for now, I can I assume you could put that in next as a status. Yeah, just to get as is assigned already. API export permission claims are not respected. 
the discussions. Stefan already and Steve responded to this. Sergius? I believe this is in the context of virtual workspaces, uh, isn't it? Yes, there is a yeah, virtual workspace you are Yes, so we had a discussion <coughs> on Slack regarding this. And um, this is not a bug. I mean, there is simply, you know, um, what I, as part of reverse permission claims, what I did is to build a, an authorizer in the virtual workspace uh, authorizer chain that asserts uh, permission claims, uh, the non-reverse part. And um, the current status is that the authorizer that I backported from that one uh, was not sufficient to solve this issue. That's the TLDR. The next steps would be, to my understanding, is that uh, to make it really complete is to have admission enabled in the virtual workspace API server uh, subsystem. And once that is hooked up at an um, admission uh, plugin that asserts those permissions, I believe that's the TLDR of the of the discussion, right, Andy? Stefan. I think so. Well, you can just assign that to you and me to search you yeah. to me and um, yeah, and maybe we'll double put it check in about, next. Double check about uh, admission. Did we say the stockage already has information? Maybe it's even simpler. I think it's like we discussed that quickly. Okay. Oh yeah, there was a method that we could potentially reuse. I will recall the discussion. Anyways. Yeah, we found something. Anyway, yeah. assignment to me and and Andy Cool. Two minutes to go for issues left. It's my thirty seconds. Yeah, issue. Yeah, just stick that in next. This one probably should also be next. Is this a flake one? Yeah. I mean, it's, we had it's a comment. What, what wasn't yeah, there? Uh, comment. Yeah, the second yeah. issue that we're not propagating the thing. Yeah, I'll add that comment after. Cool. Uh, basically, yeah. what happens is the server gets a panic um, with that one. Uh, I'm working on this, so you can put it in progress. Uh, this one you could put in next, I assume. Yeah, I, I would like to see a proposal of at least one concrete metric or more to add, because it's really yeah, it might... like from from. Sorry, sorry, excuse me. But just from past experience in other projects where we've had issues that are um, add metrics, they stay open forever because nobody knows what metrics to put in. Yes, yeah, so, so obviously uh, we should, I mean, there just should be more description here. But the point is to enable metrics uh, in the sinker first. Uh, and in the sinker, you have a number of controllers, you know, spec sinker, status sinker, App sinker, and just to have the basic normal uh, metrics of controllers like work queue okay. size and all this stuff. I think it should be a good start. The I same as what we have in I, I will add to this. I have some specific suggestions for additional metrics that are related to the uh, actual job, specifically of the sinker. Sure. I mean, at as soon as we have set up the, the basic metrics uh, access, you know, endpoint and the basic metrics of, of the controllers, then obviously we have all the freedom to add, you know, more feature related metrics into this. Except I'm wrong link, so I could paste this one so we can have it at hand. Cool. So it looks like it's top and a hour. We moved everything from one backlog to another. Any final, final things for the, this community meeting? No. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and see you next week. See you.